Good morning. Today is March 30th, Monday, 2020, and this is Creative Quarantine with Russell Loves Art. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be drawing an African elephant, um, kind of from the front view. And so we're going to be doing this uh, here on some white sulfite. Once again, I'm using Kimberly's 4B graphite drawing pencil. And we're going to start first by making a triangular shape here, like almost an isosceles triangle shape here. Okay. All the way down. Okay, I'm putting some more triangles down. Another triangle down here. Okay. And we're going to cut this down. And make kind of another little triangle on the side here. On both the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay. So again, one triangle here. And two on the side here. Long isosceles triangle down this way. Another one kind of stacked here. All right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello, Juanita. So this is going to be kind of the geometry that we're going to be using to, to draw our elephant. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a Inverted egg right in the middle here. Okay. Okay. Just like that. So if you're just joining, again, two triangles here, one large triangle going all the way down. And right in the top section of, of our triangle we're going to do an egg shape okay so if you're just joining me again one giant triangle here going down two on the side here okay and these are just placeholder shapes for when we start putting everything together okay we're gonna I'm breaking this down into the parts so that it's not so intimidating. Okay. Now the next thing that we're gonna do after we have all these shapes is we're gonna start connecting these shapes. And we're gonna make a couple more shapes actually that are gonna go kind of like right here, another kind of egg shape. Here. Okay. Just like so. I'm gonna put another triangle right around here. Another triangle here. All right. I'm gonna bring a long, elongated kind of triangle here. Another one, kind of like that. Okay. This is going to represent the head, the ears, legs, the trunk of our of our elephant, as well as the feet here. This is all going to be put together. So if you're joining me now, just make these shapes right now. You have a large triangle, some smaller triangles on the left side and right hand side, a small triangle on the bottom, an inverted egg here, and then a right side up egg right here and all of this is going to be kind of pushed together to create the forward facing walking african elephant that we're drawing today okay and again we're just doing this drawing on white paper and using a drawing pencil if you don't have a drawing pencil that's fine you don't have to have one all right so now that we have these shapes here and pretty much they're everything that we're going to need to get started 
we're going to start combining these shapes and really kind of flushing out the minutia of the facial proportions of our elephant. Elephants are intriguing animals. They're extremely intelligent. They're also um, fun to draw because they have such, you know, interesting proportions and features. Um, a unique animal. They really are. So this is going to, we're going to start on the left hand side. And we're going to start pulling these facial features up. And they're really fun to draw. And so I'm simplifying this so that, you know, for those of you who feel a little intimidated, the idea of drawing an elephant, I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. Okay. So again, we're just kind of tracing and, you know, using a, uh, a distant grip on our pencil to kind of shade these in and pull out the features of our elephant. So this is going to be the brow of our elephant here. This is where the eye is going to go. All right. Right here. All right. I hope this is going to make it easier for a lot of you to do this with me by me breaking this down into very simple parts. Okay. So now we're working on the left-hand side of this elephant. All right. And we're breaking this down into its parts using simple geometric shapes to kind of preserve and place hold a lot of the information that we're going to need going forward. So again, I'm working on the left hand side and we're going to be doing a trunk here. This is going, this area here is going to be reserved for where the tusk is coming out. Okay, we've got the trunk of our elephant. We've got the brow, forehead of our elephant too as well. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Young Jay. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Staley. How you doing? I hope you guys are well. And we're going to draw a trunk coming down. I'm sorry, not a trunk, a tusk. And both male and female African elephants have tusks, but males are significantly larger. We're going to go into the details of adding those very unique, those unique skin textures in a little bit. But first, we're just going to capture proportions. Okay, then we're going to go up here and we're going to talk about or describe, describe. And African elephant ears are much larger than the Eastern elephant counterparts that are found in Southeast Asia, India. So again, these shapes that we reserve were primarily just as a placeholder for proportions as to how big they needed to be. So now we have the left-hand side of our African elephant here with the ears. And again, we're going to go in with the details a little bit. And we reserved space down here for the elephant's legs. And we're going to actually pull these out a little bit further than a little bit further than those triangles. And just, those are gonna be the feet of our elephant as it's coming toward us. Hey Mookie, hey Braden, hello Sophia. I'm glad you guys can join us today. Excuse me, join me in my kitchen as I'm doing this. 
Okay. Join the hoops. Okay, so now we have proportions so far all down. The next thing that we're going to do is move on to the right hand side now. And I'm keeping everything kind of simple. I haven't gone into the details of shading. Alright, so we're going to move over this way. Again, using these shapes that I've already predetermined, that's how I'm going to figure out where everything else is going to go. Okay. And make sure you know you're you're checking your proportions. If things don't feel right, you can always change them. It's totally fine. And when you're mirroring things, you know, like the proportions of this beautiful animal's face, you know, you can always run into problems. And that's okay. Like I just did. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Now, I'm going to go and now do the ear, now that I have my face. Pull this trunk and pull the ivory these tusks down. Don't want to make them perfectly proportional either, though. Trunks are a lot bigger than people realize. And they start up a lot higher than people realize too as well. Okay. We're gonna go up here. Pull the ears out. And I'm staggering the legs a little bit, you know, to give it a natural weighted feel. Okay. All right. Hi, hey, John. And hello, Nathan. Hope you're using that book I gave your brother. All right, so we have a pretty good start here with our elephant. Now what we're gonna do is go in with some shading. To start pulling out all the different fun things that drawing an elephant can give us. In particular, an African elephant. These are very majestic animals, very powerful. Largest land animals in the world. All right, so we're gonna move to a more sharpened, same pencil, but one that's sharpened. Uh, we're gonna try and keep the light source, maybe not totally on the right, but actually on you know, coming from the top down. All right. So the first thing I want to do is maybe start putting in some of my darker darks. Okay. 
and maybe putting some detail on the eyes. Okay. So I'm gonna put uh, a lot of shading actually down here on the bottom. But before I get way into that, what I'm gonna do is clean up some of our geometric lines here that we use. Okay. You can use this time, if I've gone too fast, you can use this time to play a little catch up. not bad that you're watching this while you're in a class it's fine <laughs> look um you know there's been a lot of talk amongst teachers you know and like how do we hold kids accountable and it's you know it's tough like i know the visual arts teachers at my school are trying to make it so that most of the assignments that you guys are doing are asymmetric meaning that you are doing this or, or asynchronous, you know, synchronous, asynchronous, so that you guys are able to do this stuff on your own and not have to be um, held accountable to a specific time. But, you know, this is my synchronous activity for my students, you know, that they can participate if they want to, but I'm not holding kids accountable to that. This is a difficult time in our country right now, really difficult. It's not been easy for a lot of people, you know? And I'm trying really hard not to be a stressor in people's lives, you know? Because there's, there's bigger issues right now. There's, um, we're dealing with more than just distance learning and things like that. We're dealing with an unprecedented thing that's happening in our world right now. And... The one thing I do not want to do is create more stress for students. Do your work as best you can with what you have. And man, I tell you, it's it's a hard deal to kind of... I can't mimic what I do in my classroom, at home, in my kitchen. And I can't imagine... I have more art supplies here than most people. And I'm trying to create activities for people to follow along that anybody could participate in. I could do a whole bunch of acrylic paintings and oil paintings and watercolor, and but not many people have those kind of materials at their disposal. So we're just doing this with pencil and paper and having you guys do this to the best of your ability. But, you know, if... You're doing other classes, and you have life is life doesn't stop. I mean, I wish it, I wish I could say yeah, it's gonna stop, but it's, there are other factors and other personalities that are contributing to what's going on, and not just me. But for my students. For our art, visual art students, do what you can. Do as much as you can. And that's, that's where we'll go forward. So right now, all I'm doing is I am adding um, texture here on the edge of the elephant's ears. These huge, gigantic things that they use for hearing across the plains of the Serengeti. And we're going to start shading. So our light source is going to be directly above our elephant. So I'm using kind of a distant grip here 
for shading. All right. I'm gonna work from left to right so I'm not smudging too much. I'm going over. And I'm going to shade some areas here on the edge. Hey, hi Mia. I get a little preachy, and if I sound a little preachy, please forgive me. So I'm, all I'm doing is going through and kind of refining my line, my edge here, and keeping it broken, putting a little pressure pulling up just like so if you can see that and again I'm working from left to right Distant grip. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. I'm using a little bit of cross hatching, but more blending cross hatching as I'm going around the ear. If you guys can see that. And again, I'm again I'm doing most of the stuff that I'm doing on live, and then also posting on my my YouTube channel, so that anybody can kind of engage in these projects that we're doing. You know, with things found around your household, most people have pencils. If you don't, I apologize. Just. trying to keep the workshops or these these tutorials so that anybody can really engage in them and have fun with them. I'm getting a lot of questions from students, you know, like, what's the likelihood of us going back to school? You know, I, I'm not a shot caller, you know, but what I'm seeing it doesn't look good. So what I'm doing is just adding texture. And value. Now, I'm going to go through and really darken these values on this side. I'm also going to use my eraser to pull out the white tone of the tusk. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, wow. NPC is online for the rest of the semester. Good call. Good call, NPC. Okay, I'm going through and just, again, adding texture, wrinkles. Those are really wrinkly animals. Ashura, how you doing, bro? Hope you are well. Hello. All right, so we're going to now kind of, we have these really kind of perfect lines. We're gonna kind of break these up a little bit. Show some wrinkles, yeah. And we're gonna do really some hard wrinkles here going across and also just break it up so that space wise some of them are closer some of them are going to be further away amaya gomez is texting me so we're gonna have a lot of space up here, and then we're gonna, sh you know, kind of, the space between those is gonna get a little bit narrower as we go up closer to the eyes. All right. And, we're gonna, and when we get to these edges here, we're going to kind of pull as in curve those lines down. You see that? Curve these lines down. Make some lateral goals. That's such a... Hello, Tristan. Hello, Ava. Hello, Lucy. Hi, Billy. I'm glad to see that Folks are okay. Okay. So between here, around here and here, we're going to get a little bit more vacuum hose. So these are going to be a little bit tighter. And I'm going to fill these in kind of quickly. And as we get further and further down, we're going to change the angle a little bit of our tubes, our little lines here to represent the curvature of the trunk. Okay. Some of these lines are going to overlap. That's okay. Totally okay. You know, the weathermen were saying that it was going to rain all weekend. And then it didn't. And then today I wake up and it's wet. I swear to God, my next job is going to be a meteorologist so that I can go to work and just make predictions and be wrong 90% of the time, still get paid, and never get fired. Okay. I don't know. So... Now, what we're going to do, and we have that. Go put a little shadow on one of these tusks on the side. A little shadow. Darken the values around it. Boom. All right. Next, 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 next. We're going to put some actual shadow on the trunk further goes down and away from the light source. So I'm going to use a curved cross hatch. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Maya. I would answer your text, child, but I'm a little busy. 
So we're also going to do some vertical lines too as well to represent wrinkles within each one of these sections. We're not going to make them perfectly aligned either. We're going to break it up, make some closer, make some further away. Some of the lines are going to connect, some of them are not. That gives it a little bit more sense of realism going forward. Okay. Just imagine bark of a tree. Yeah. Okay, some more shading. Almost. Am I hateful and in the house? Now we're going to move on to the right hand side. Kind of the same thing, we're going to go through and value shade. Darken the areas around the legs. Have a little bit more room to work now. Organic line. Cross hatching to cover a lot of ground, but less pressure. I don't want to show his marks as, as much. What the heck's a face reveal, Athena? I don't know what that. What, what is that? Explain. I mean, like, do a, a face drawing? I could do that. Make sure that you're explaining. Hey, Archer. How you doing? Long time to see. Last time I saw you, you were cameraman for AMP. Shout out to AMP, by the way. Kind of curious if you're still working there. Darken some of these values. Shading going this way. Okay. Oh, cool. Congrats. Hello, Christy. Thank you for joining me. So again, we're using a distant grip, less pressure to build up our values. Cut across. Ooh, gotta clean this up. Once again, a little shadow here. I'm gonna go through and do the edge of our ears, grab another pencil, a little bit sharper, so I can really do a clean job here. And we're kind of making these like folds. That makes any sense.
Okay. Now. Go through here. Kind of. Add these curved lines to show this is a three-dimensional shape. And also the texture of the, the skin. Hi, Sam. Okay, yeah, just call me later. I'm going to clean up the edge here. Again, organic line. I'm going to start pulling the value up from the fold. Just with simple strokes. More pressure near the edge, less pressure as I'm going forward. Just like so. Smooth those out a little bit with some crosshatch shading. Thank you, Olivia. I hope you're safe. And not too bored. It's one thing that I've been hearing a lot from students who reached out is that they're bored. I wish I could say that. Um, I'm good. I'm working on another project for you guys, and I don't know when I'll be done with it, but hopefully it will add some levity to these days. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. opportunity for you guys to watch these videos, these demos, these tutorials, whenever you want. Hi, Kara. How you doing, girl? I hope you're well. Yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's weird not having my classroom, not having the ability to provide a safe space for, for students every day, a place for them to gather and socialize, find support for one another. Um, during breaks and lunch and after school. And that's probably the hardest thing is that I don't have that ability to, to talk, to communicate with my students on a regular daily basis, you know, and, and just checking in to see how they're doing. You know, I just don't have that anymore. It's disconcerting, it's, it's hard when a big part of your day is Checking in and making sure that your clients, your students, are, are whole. So if you are one individual who wants to reach out, touch base, or if you need any support other than just an email, you know, you can DM me, you can email me, and we can set up an appointment to talk some time. I'm available. All right. So I'm going to 
go through here, darken some of these. I'll use darken the eyes a little bit. Some texture there around the eye. More texture. I'm just trying to balance out values now. We're getting there. Back in 2014, I did a, a series of paintings of painted elephants. And I used what I should have used um, for those paintings are Indian elephants, but I liked African. I like African elephants, so I did a bunch of painted African elephants. And though you'd think you could decorate <laughs> these pachyderms, African elephants probably would not sit still and have a real problem with being painted. They're a little bit more tenacious than their calmer Eastern Asian relatives. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little shadow on the bottom here. And because our light source is from the top, we're gonna make it more of like a cast shadow of the elephant coming towards us. Stretch this out. And again, we're not trying to force this. I'm using kind of a distant grip again, as in like putting my hand and fingers further back on the pencil. And I'm just gonna build this up slowly. Hey, one. I'm just using horizontal strokes right now. Pulling them out a little bit further. Then I'm gonna go through and use some diagonal shading as well. And go the other way. Again, distant grip. A little bit more pressure when I'm closer to the feet of the elephant. Because that's where you're, you're going to get your stronger, darker shadows. It's closer to the thing that's casting the shadow. Not a drop shadow, a cast shadow. More pressure. I'm gonna feather this out to make it look more natural. Getting closer, more pressure, tighter lines. Boom. Now we're gonna go back to horizontal. More pressure. lines there you go I'm 
And we're going to feather this out, just like so. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do some vertical shading. Just a little bit, not too much. Further this out. And blend. and blend. And I'm using kind of a neutral pressure to blend these areas together. Now I'm going to go a little bit harder, go a little bit wider with those darker values. You guys see that? And once again, vertical blending. Going across diagonally. And blending. And now horizontal again. And some of those marks I want to preserve. Some of them. Not all of them, but just a few. Same thing on the other side. Hi, Arabella. Again, far grip or distant grip. Light pressure. Distant grip. Blending now. And horizontal. Oh, I know who that is. I do. Joe Exotic. I don't know if I want to, though. <laughs> I don't know if I can stand that, that deep, deep Texas accent. All right, now what we're gonna do is just use our pink eraser, go through, pull out those highlights, 
What's cool about erasers, not only can you use them to get rid of information you don't want, you can also use it to smudge versus your fingers. I'm gonna do that right now. Kind of soften some of these. So rather than putting a lot of pressure, what I'm doing is I'm kind of very light pressure, moving some of this graphite around to soften some of these values on the ear. Can you guys see that? Yeah. There we go. On the legs. Add a little tonal value to these little toes, the ears in particular. Yeah. Alright, Anna. Pull, 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 pull. I'm gonna use that to pull a little bit of the values on the trunk. Smooth them out a little bit on the ivory, the tusks. Okay. As well as our values here. You guys see that? This is again just a pink eraser. I'm using this to create nice even values. Okay. And that's what should ha that's what happens. Use the other pink eraser to kind of pull out eyelids. <sighs> okay. Well, looks like we are done. Got a nice drawing of an elephant from Africa, pachyderm. All right, so thank you guys for joining me today. We're going to be here again tomorrow, uh, 11 o'clock, for another Creative Quarantine drawing tutorial. Enjoy your day, stay safe, stay home, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much.